Number 10. Pizza Delivery Trap when 27-year-old Nathan Leon went out to deliver a Domino's order on March 17, 2013, he had no idea he was driving into a literal death trap. A man had placed an order for his Sap Brothers service location in the rural part of Denver. Leon, a married father of three who also worked at IBM, the tech company, was the driver assigned to deliver the meal. According to police, Leon was led into a violent and intricate revenge scheme by Evan Ebel, a 28-year-old man who had recently got out of prison on a fluke. Leon never made it back to the Domino's restaurant that night. A mile away from the Sap Brothers site, his car was discovered left abandoned. The phone of the missing driver was later located in a ditch in Golden, Colorado. Police say Ebel kidnapped Leon from the delivery, stashed him in his trunk, and drove away. Ebel made his victim record a rambling statement that attacked the Colorado jail system. According to authorities, Ebel then shot and killed Leon. Ebel then arrived at the house of the Colorado Department of Corrections chief, Tom Clements, in Monument, Colorado two days later. Ebel fatally shot Clements as he answered the door, and he fled the state. After a car chase and a firefight with law enforcement officers in Texas, Ebel was shot and killed two days later. In Ebel's car, a Domino's delivery shirt and visor were located. Ebel is suspected of killing Leon to get his Domino's uniform as a disguise to corner Clements. Number 9. Ronald McDonald Protests Yes, you heard that correctly. Gareth Hughes, a Greenpeace activist dressed in a full Ronald McDonald suit, makeup and all, was arrested back in May 2004. Ronald locked himself to the gates of the McDonald's distribution center in Weary's Golden Arches place. He was criticizing McDonald's use of genetically modified GE soy-fed chicken in their products. He remarked that he was very fed up with McDonald's lack of action after presenting his resignation three weeks ago in Auckland, and that McDonald's should get off their golden arches and go GE free. Ronald the protester was joined by a small group of Greenpeace members dressed as chickens who also stuck to McDonald's Weary's Distribution Center's enormous steel golden arch gates. With a bicycle lock around his neck and a massive dramatic padlock and chain, the legendary clown chained himself to the gates. The slogan, Mick D's chickens are fed up with GE, was scribbled on a sign alongside Ronald in a speech bubble. Ronald stated that he would not leave until McDonald's agreed to stop using GE products. The fire department was summoned and the lock device around Ronald's neck was severed before he was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct. Looks like he's done clowning around, for now at least. Number 8. The Denny's Manager on February 3, 1996, Cyrus Sally, a Denny's employee that worked the graveyard shift at a Los Angeles restaurant, had just finished up a few tasks. According to the Los Angeles Times, the 38-year-old bought half ownership of the Reseda facility and also married his two-year girlfriend only 11 months before this incident. But Sally's life would be cut short that winter morning over a few hundred dollars. Ruben Lopez, then 20 years old, armed and dangerous, walked into the diner brandishing a gun. Saleh complied with his demands by handing over $400 from the cash register. Despite this gesture, Lopez still shot the Denny's manager in the chest and killed him on the spot. Lopez and his getaway driver, Samuel Martinez, who was 19 at the time, were both found guilty of Saleh's murder and sentenced to life in prison without the chance of release, while Saleh's girlfriend forever lost her lover. Number 7. Chipotle Robbery in June 2013, five people were charged with robbing a Chipotle on Detroit Avenue in Ohio. The accusations included aggravated robbery, first-degree felony, obstructing justice, a fifth-degree felony, as well as a 2,443 reparation payment to the restaurant and staff. Leisha Campbell, 22, the restaurant's manager, told police she was walking to her car late that night after her shift when she was approached by two masked men that forced her back into the establishment and demanded she empty the safe. Following an investigation, it was discovered that Campbell, along with co-defendants Kenneth Cook, Jessica Zimmerman, Randall Zimmerman, and Sean Zimmerman, assisted in the planning and execution of this crime. Campbell now faces a maximum sentence of three years in jail for her role. Cook and the three Zimmermans each pleaded guilty to the robbery charge. 
Jessica Lynn Zimmerman and Cook have each been given heftier punishments and were sentenced to eight years in jail, while Randall Zimmerman Jr. and Sean A. Zimmerman have been given three years in prison. I hope that Chipotle money was worth it for them. What's your worst fast food experience? Let us know down in the comments below. If you liked the video so far, be sure to subscribe. Number 6. The Unsolved Murder of the Pizza Hut Driver it began as a routine Saturday night shift at Hassan Raham's Wichita Pizza Hut, where he worked as a regular old delivery driver. The Bangladeshi immigrant left on November 25, 2017 to make two deliveries. But things took a nasty turn when he failed to return to the restaurant. Co-workers from Pizza Hut set out to search for their missing co-worker, but couldn't find him. When the body of the Wichita State University engineering student was discovered in the trunk of his car the next day, the mystery quickly turned to grief. Although police have stated they do not believe Rahman's death was the result of just a simple robbery, the case still remains unsolved. According to the Wichita Eagle, investigators suspect Rahman's murder was unrelated to the deliveries, and that it could be linked to a double homicide around the time of his disappearance. Huang Pham, 62, and her son Cody Ha, 23, were shot to death in their home on the night of November 25th, not far from where Raham's car was discovered. Pizza Hut's headquarters offered a $10,000 payment for information about Raham's killing to help solve the case for their lost employee. Number 5. The Fast Food Killer Paul Dennis Reed Jr., a dishwasher and convicted thief, allegedly threw a plate at a co-worker in the kitchen of a Nashville Shoney's on February 15, 1997. The 39-year-old wannabe country singer was quickly fired afterwards by the restaurant's manager. Reed went on a killing rampage the next day out of anger. According to investigators, he targeted fast food establishments and killed at least seven people. He began his journey close to home, entering a Captain D's before the restaurant even opened. At the time, Shoney's operated the seafood restaurant chain and this particular site was close to Reed's former work. Reed is accused of robbing the Captain D's and shooting the manager on staff, Steve Hampton 25, and employee Sarah Jackson 16 at point blank range when they tried to hide in the refrigerator. According to the Tennessee Supreme Court's briefing on these murders, Reed then ambushed four McDonald's employees closing up a shift in the chain's Hermitage, Tennessee location about a month later on March 23, 1997. After manager Ronald Santiago, 27, opened up the restaurant safe, Reed killed him, 17-year-old Andrea Brown, and 23-year-old Robert Sewell. After his rifle malfunctioned, Reed mercilessly stabbed another helpless victim. Thankfully, that employee lived through the attack. On April 23, 1997, the final murders linked to Reed began in a Baskin Robbins in Clarksville, Tennessee. According to the court's summary, Reed kidnapped two ice cream employees, Angela Holmes, 21, and Michelle May, 16, and murdered them both in the Dunbar Cave State Park. Strangely enough, Reed's old Shoney's manager was the one who finally put an end to these vicious killings. The manager opened the door on June 25, 1997 to discover the employee he'd fired four months before just standing there. Reed demanded his job back and then pulled out a revolver, attempting to kidnap his former boss. Reed's mental competency was questioned after he was sentenced to death several times over. The so-called fast food killer was never put to death for his crimes. He died in 2013 of natural causes. Number 4. Held at Pitchfork You heard that right yet again. In Norcross, Georgia, a man came into a neighborhood Waffle House and robbed it with a pitchfork. He literally herded workers into the restroom and tried unsuccessfully to open the cash register. He eventually just gave up and stole the full register before dumping the pitchfork in the parking lot. The staff pursued him into the parking lot after he dropped the garden tool and attempted to attack him with his own weapon. Number 3. The Taco Bell Strangler When Sylvia Sumter found her 21-year-old daughter Shauna Hawk missing from work on February 19, 1993, she knew something was wrong. Hawk was considered an always dependable part-time employee at her local Taco Bell in Charlotte, North Carolina. She worked to help pay for her education at the Piedmont Central Community College. 
Sumter called her daughter's workplace after she didn't show up for dinner that February evening, assuming Hawk had just been asked to work a last minute shift. Her co-workers, on the other hand, had no idea where she could be. None of them except for one. Hawk's former boss and buddy, Henry Lewis Wallace, who was eventually convicted of murdering Hawk along with 10 other women. Sumner didn't know her daughter was dead in the home's basement bathroom when she called for help. She was the convicted killer's third victim at the time. Wallace, dubbed the Taco Bell Strangler by the press, preyed on at least eight more women before being arrested in 1994. According to Geringer, his victims included a number of girls he met while working in restaurants, such as a Taco Bell employee, Audrey Spain, and regular restaurant goer, Michelle Stinson. According to the Charlotte News outlet, Wallace met the victims Carolyn Love and Betty Balcom through a girlfriend who worked at a local Bojangles. He was convicted and sentenced to death nine times after his capture in 1994. He still remains on death row today. To honor her daughter, Sumter founded the Mothers of Murdered Offspring. This advocacy group aims to assist families in navigating the cycle of grief and devastation that follows along with the murder of a loved one. Number 2. Wendy's Robbery Massacre The manager's voice came over the intercom at Wendy's on Main Street in Flushing, Queens around midnight. On the night of May 24, 2000, all the staff on duty were required to attend a meeting in the back office right before closing. The team followed the order, including Raymond Nazario, 44, Ali Abadat, 40, Anita Smith, 23, and Jeremy Mele, 19, as well as two others. But when they entered the manager John Augustus's office, they were met by unexpected company. Craig Godinow and John Taylor were also present. According to the Associated Press, Taylor was a former restaurant employee that quit under suspicion of stealing. He had returned with a pistol ready to rob the place. The criminals used duct tape to bind and gag seven Wendy's employees. According to a tape confession, these victims were forced inside the refrigerator where Taylor and Godinow shot each of them like an execution. Augustus, Nazario, Ibadat, Smith, and Mele were all killed. The other two workers were unharmed, physically at least. One of the critically injured employees, who had only started working two weeks before the massacre, was able to get free, rescuing the other survivor from the fridge and calling the cops. According to the New York Times, Taylor and Gata now made $2,400 from the robbery, which is nothing compared to the price of the lives they took. The two were found guilty of murder in a subsequent trial. Taylor was given the death penalty, while Godinow, who suffers from mental illness, was given a life sentence. Months after the tragedy, relatives and friends of the victims gathered at the Queen's Botanical Gardens to plant a cherry tree in memory of their fallen loved ones. Number 1. Murder at Chili's William Wood was a regular at the Chili's in at New York. But in the early morning of September 15th, 2018, he didn't enter the restaurant to report for a shift or get food. Nope, Wood returned to rob his former boss, police said. Once inside, Wood held four of his old co-workers at gunpoint, ordering them to lie down on the floor. Then, he forced the manager and father of two, Stephen Goodnecht, to hand over all $875 from the safe. Wood then shot Goodnecht and another Chili's employee, Christopher Hicks, in the head, according to police. Wood was also accused of aiming his gun at a female employee, but fled when the weapon miraculously jammed. The employee dialed 911 and held Goodnecht's hands as he slowly died. Hicks was also taken to a local hospital by paramedics, where he also passed away. Wood pleaded guilty and was given a life sentence without possibility of parole. Four more people were arrested in connection with the case in September 2018 with allegations ranging from driving the getaway car to buying his weapon. Wood is now facing the death penalty as of April 2019. Thanks for watching. Which of these New York crimes did you find the craziest? Do you know any other stories? Let us know in the comments and if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit subscribe for more. See you next time on the Bad Badger.